What is up, y'all? So today we're talking about work capacity. So what is it? Why should you care about it? And how to improve it? Because this is one thing that might actually be, drum roll please, bop, 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 bum, killing your game. Now, how do you know if you have good or bad work capacity? Well, there are a few things that you can either measure or at least observe. One is that you can do a few sets, taking all of them very close to failure, and you can see how much your reps actually drop off. So let's say you do a set of 10, and then you get nine, eight, seven, six. That would be very, very good work capacity, assuming they're all very hard sets. If you get 10, eight, six, five, four, I would say that is okay. If you get 10 on the first set, and then only three on the next set, and then one on the, on the next set, and then you're just like, ah, screw this, I'm going home. That is probably bad work capacity. If you get this big drop off, it means you just don't have the ability to do a lot of work. And while we should not confuse the ability to do work with the ability to grow from that, I would say at least having that capability is always a good thing. It's also gonna be a little bit exercise dependent. For example, pull-ups are notorious for having a big drop-off in reps if you go to failure or near failure on the first set. You can also observe how long it takes you to recover in between sets. I know there's research, which I have actually cited in the past, saying that three minutes is better than one minute for hypertrophy. And I think in general that is the case. But you have to keep in mind that a lot of these lifters that they're testing are what are known as normie scum. So they're probably not in good shape anyway. And yeah, they can give a better effort with three minutes. However, if you need three minutes in between curls or in between lateral raises or something like that, and you're huffing and puffing in between isolations or upper body movements, you're probably just out of shape, all right? Don't think like, oh, I'm just, I'm doing a lot of work. Nah, you're probably just out of shape. And I'm not saying you should force the recovery times. You should absolutely go by feel and wait till you can give a good effort. But again, if you are super out of breath, especially if it's something like a bench press or a pull up or, you know, even like a bent over row, if those are getting you absolutely gassed, that's a sign that maybe focusing on improving your work capacity could help you tremendously. And I'm not talking about, hey, after a set of 20 reps in the squat, I'm out of breath. You should be out of breath in that case, okay? So for lower body, especially higher reps, pretty much everyone is going to get gassed. But if it destroys you for the entire workout after that, and you're just on the floor or you're puking or something like that, yeah, I would say work capacity might be an issue. Another indication that your work capacity might be holding you back is if you are carrying excess levels of body fat. This is simple just because you're gonna be carrying extra weight, therefore it's gonna be taking more energy, especially if you're doing exercises that are moving that body weight. This is gonna cause extra levels of systemic inflammation. This could all mess up could also mess up your hormone levels. So uh, I think if you are above 20% body fat, it is much more likely that you're gonna have to make work capacity a priority. All right, so what are the benefits? What are the reasons? Why should we even give a shit about this? Well, first of all, it can absolutely impact your gains. I would say not having at least a decent work capacity is something that will definitely impact progression in the gym, okay? so being able to do more work and recover from it is a good thing, absolutely. It's also good for your overall health, okay? If you're getting winded walking up the stairs, that's not good, bro. Also, skills. So if you're a power lifter uh, or if you're an Olympic weightlifter, just being able to do more sets and practice the movements that you wanna get good at more is going to be better for getting good at those movements. Amazing, right? It's also gonna help your recovery as I will get into a little bit later. Now, it depends on the population as well. So if someone is very strong and you're getting out of breath, that makes sense, okay? If you're squatting 500 pounds for 10, most likely you're not gonna feel great after that, okay? It's a lot of work. So that might not be a work capacity issue. On the other hand, if you do a set of 10 with 135, one plate in the squat, and you're huffing and puffing, that is a totally different story. So to a certain extent, if you are strong, taking longer recovery times or having the movement be more taxing is sort of understandable. Now there's a little bit of a myth going on where fiber type is often to blame. So if someone fatigues very quickly or if they don't get a certain number of reps with a percentage of their one rep max, 
uh, they might say, ah, I'm fast twitch, bro. Like, ah, uh, you know, all you slow twitch people can go on forever, but I'm fast twitch. Uh, actually, there's very little association between fiber type and the amount of reps that you can get. This is just a cop out. And usually when you question these so-called fast twitch people, oh, how do you know you're fast twitch? Well, they point to the number of reps, but that's not a good test for actually testing fiber type. So you say, oh, have you had a biopsy? No, they've never had a biopsy. And what actually was associated with the work capacity that people had wasn't fiber type, it was capillarization. So you have what are called capillaries, and these are essentially the blood vessels that deliver nutrients and oxygen to the muscle, as well as shuttling waste products away. And this is at the heart of what gives you your work capacity as well as your ability to recover. And every time I post a workout, people say overtraining or you'll never recover or oh, you must have been sore for a week. To me, this is just normal training because I have good work capacity. And this is something that I have found to be extremely beneficial. And I think most people would do well to focus on this. And here's how. First, you might have to do cardio. I know you might not like it, but uh, it could be something that is actually beneficial. This doesn't have to be super fancy. You could do intervals, you could do just steady state. Both are fine, both will get you to a very similar place. You could do GPP, so this could be calisthenics, higher rep stuff. I know uh, Alex from Alpha Destiny has a lot of content with regards to that. Super, super effective. Getting a higher step count, especially if you're on the heavier side, this will actually be a pretty decent form of cardio, especially if you're walking a little bit on the faster side. You could also do more reps and higher reps when you are warming up. So doing something like a winning warm up with like a four by 25 on leg press or something. I know this sounds crazy. And in the beginning, it might actually impact your strength. But the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it and you'll actually reap the benefits of having that higher work capacity that vascularity, that capillarization, et cetera, which can actually be extremely beneficial. You could also do something like a nucleus overload. Uh, I have to do an updated video on this. Uh, it's, I've sort of changed my mind on it. I think there's a lot of value to this. Uh, Team 3D Alpha, I think he's right on the money with this kind of stuff. And I think a big part of the benefit is not just the satellite cells, the nuclei, the myonuclear domain, but it's actually the increased capillarization and the higher work capacity. You could also add in higher rep finishers. I would keep this on easier movements, but this can be a very, very time efficient way to just tire the muscle out, get a lot of blood in there. I'm not against pump training. I just think that it is sort of secondary and supplementary to your main training. You could also do strongman type of training. Strongmen compared to powerlifters are often just in better cardiovascular shape. You have that powerlifting meme where it's anything more than five reps is cardio. Well, strongmen, they have to have good work capacity just because their events often demand it. Finally, and I didn't write this down, but you can take more sets to failure. I know there's a lot of scientific evidence saying that failure takes longer to recover from. I would say this is exercise dependent, and it depends on how well trained you are. If you're used to training to failure, failure won't be nearly as taxing. You adapt, you get used to it, you can improve and get better. Amazing, right? So yeah, that's all for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, conundrums down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.